The following is a message from the pulpit of the Bible Baptist Church of Tuscaloosa, Alabama, led by Pastor Philip Blackwell. It is our desire that God would use this message to be a help and a blessing to you. If you're looking for a traditional church where Christ is preeminent and the membership is family, we invite you to come and be our guest. Now may God bless you as you listen. Gospel of John chapter 3 is where we're at tonight. Let's stand together, please, out of love and respect for the Word of God. We're going to pick up our reading there in verse number 22. The Gospel of John chapter number 3 and verse number 22. The Bible says this, After these things came Jesus and his disciples into the land of Judea, and there he tarried with them and baptized. And John also was baptizing near Anon, near Salem, because there was much water there. And they came and were baptized, for John was not yet cast into prison. Then there arose a question between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purifying. And they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, behold, the same baptizeth, and all men come to him. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. Ye yourselves bear me witness that I said, I am not the Christ, but that I am sent before him. He that hath the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom which standeth and heareth him rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This my joy therefore is fulfilled. He must increase, but I must decrease. He that cometh from above is above all, and he that is of the earth is earthy and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. And what he hath seen and heard, that he testifieth, and no man receiveth his testimony. He that hath received his testimony hath set to his seal that God is true. For he whom God hath sent speaketh the words of God. For God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. The Father loveth the Son, and hath given all things into his hand. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him." There's so many sermons, so many messages from verse 22 down to verse number 36. And I'm, now I'm going to try to not, tonight not to run a bunch of rabbits. But tonight we're going to be focusing on this text and we're going to look at the thrust of this text. And it's found there in verse number 30. John said this, John the Baptist, he said, He must increase, but I must decrease. Tonight we're going to look at this text and we're going to see how Jesus must increase. Let's pray together. Lord, we love you. And God, we are thankful tonight that we're able to gather together. And Lord, read your precious word. Lord, as I stand before these people, God, as I've opened up your word and I've already read from it, Lord, how my heart and mind is just stirred by the reading of your word. And Lord, tonight I would ask you that as we look at these verses, I pray that the Holy Spirit of God would give us clarity of thought and clarity of mind tonight that we might hear and see what the Spirit of God tells us through the Word of God. Lord, I know that my voice is vain unless the Spirit of God might empower it through preaching your Word. And so, Lord, tonight I would pray that you would give me the words that I need to say. Lord, that I might rightly divide your word. And, God, that I might rightly teach your scriptures to these people. Now, Lord, be with us tonight. God, have your hand upon this service. Lord, thank you for Jesus and what he did for us on Calvary's cross. Lord, I'm so thankful. Lord, as I was reading there, I was reminded there in verse 36 again that he that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. Now, Lord, I'm thankful that it's through your Son's shed blood that I get to have everlasting life. Lord, I rejoice in my salvation tonight. And God, I just pray you'd be with us and help us now. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated tonight. 
Here in John chapter number 3, verses 22 through 36, you can divide this chapter up really under two points. The first point is this, the subject of Jesus. You'll see this in verses 22 down through verse number 26. Now, if you'll look there in verse number 23, you'll see where this subject arose. The Bible says in verse 23 of John 3, it says, And John also was baptizing in Anon near Salem because there was much water there and they came and were baptized. So notice where this event is going to take place in a place uh, that is called Anon and that's near Salem. Now where is this place? Well there have been a lot of arguments about the exact location of where this is. No one's been able to figure it out exactly uh, where it's at but the fact is this. Everyone agrees that this was in Judea. Uh, We find that Jesus left Jerusalem there in John chapter three, but he's still in that Judean area, and uh, that is where uh, Jesus is baptizing. That is where John is at. So you've got both of these men uh, baptizing near one another. So the where is in Anon near Salem. The subject, uh, the why of the subject, why did this subject about Jesus arise? We find that answer in verse 22, 25, and 26. Look there in verse 22. The Bible says, After these things, Jesus and his disciples came into the land of Judea, and there he tarried with them and baptized. So Jesus was there in that Judean area, and he was baptizing. So don't miss this. You've got John baptizing there at Anon, and you've got Jesus there in Judea as well. Both of these men are administering the ordinance of baptism. Now jump down to verse number 25. The Bible says, Then there arose a question between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purifying. They were talking about being washed with water, the old purifying rites uh, that the Jewish people would do. And there were some uh, questions that were beginning to arise between John's disciples and those Jews. Now look down at verse 26. And they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, behold, the same baptizeth, and all men come to him. And so notice you've got the Jews and John's disciples. Man, they're in an uproar right now. They have a lot of questions, and they're talking about purifying. They're liking it unto baptism. And they come to John, and they said, uh, John, you know, Jesus, he's in the same area that we are, and he is baptizing And it looks like all men are coming to him. What's going on? And so we find here that the reason that this subject had arisen is really because of jealousy. The Jew, the Jew, not the Jews, but the uh, disciples of John uh, were looking around and saying, Hey, why is Jesus now baptizing more than you? Why is it that uh, the whole world or many or all men are going unto him and they're now forsaking you? And so the disciples of John, they were a little nervous about what was going on. Well, notice the statements of John in verses 27 through 36. There are basically three categories that all of John's statements that can be fit into. First of all is John's statement concerning the authority of Jesus. Number two, John's statement concerning the priority of Jesus. And number three, John's statement concerning the superiority of Jesus. In a nutshell, what John is going to do in verses 27 through 36 is to tell his disciples that this thing in his ministry is not about he himself and his own glory, but it's about Jesus Christ. And so John is showing his disciples that the focus of ministry is not about people coming unto he himself, but about men going unto Jesus Christ. And so here, uh, uh, John the Baptist is going to reveal some things about the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's going to show us three categories that all these statements can fit into uh, of the reason why Jesus must increase But John the Baptist must decrease. And by the way, John the Baptist did not have a problem with decreasing. He didn't have one problem with what was going on. Now why? Well, there's three reasons. Number one, we find the authority of Jesus. John didn't have a problem with what was going on. He didn't have a problem that it seemed like all men were going to Jesus. He didn't have a problem with that. You know why? Because he realized the authority of Jesus Christ. Look down at verse number 27. The Bible says, John answered and said, 
A man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. Now don't miss that. John said a man can receive nothing unless it were given him from heaven. So here we find that that John is acknowledging the authority of Jesus Christ to baptize and for all men to go unto him. And rightfully so, because think about it this way. Jesus was the Son of God. He was the Christ. And according to his own testimony to Nicodemus, Jesus says that he is the only one to have come down from heaven which is in heaven. He's talking about himself. And so what he's saying is that Jesus has all authority. Hey, it's kind of like this. Jesus can do whatever Jesus wants to do, and we don't have any right to complain about it. Hey, Jesus is always right because He has all power, and He is filled with all authority. You know why? Because He is the Son of God, and He has the full authority of God the Father upon He Himself and His ministry. You know, oftentimes we get bent out of shape. And we get to look at our lives and what's going on in our lives. And we think maybe that the Lord is being just a little bit unfair. We think maybe we're not getting the glory that we ought to get. We think maybe that uh, the, that God is not doing right by us. But listen tonight, God has all authority to do whatsoever He desires to do. You know why? Because He is God. You know, I saw a bumper sticker years ago and it stuck in my head. It was a bumper sticker on the back of this car, and it says there are two truths in the world. Number one, there is a God. Number two, you're not Him. And you know, that's the truth. That is the absolute truth. And friend, what I'm telling you tonight is that Jesus has all authority. Hey, John was just a man. He received his authority from God. But Jesus was God manifest in the flesh. And Jesus was all authority. And he had the full approval of God the Father on his ministry. Did not the Holy Spirit come down upon Jesus Christ? Did not God the Father out of heaven say, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased? Did not Jesus withstand the devil? Hey, God's authority was placed upon the Son of God, and He had all right to do whatever He desired to do. See, Jesus has all authority. He has all authority to save. (laughs) He can save whoever He wants to. By the way, if you don't like somebody, Jesus can still save them. Even if you don't like them, Jesus still can save them. He doesn't have to get your permission. Also, Jesus has authority to baptize. We find that Jesus has the authority to send forth labors. And by the way, he can choose to send you forth, by the way, without your approval. He can choose you to go. Hey, Jesus has all authority to cleanse the temple. Hey, in short, Jesus as the Son has all authority. And what John said at the beginning is that a man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. And listen, Jesus Christ, hey, he came down from heaven as not only a man but the Son of God. And so we find that here that that John had no problem with uh, Jesus' ministry and Jesus increasing while he himself is decreasing. You know why? Because he realized the authority of Jesus Christ. Number two, he also realized the priority of Jesus Christ. Now, John the Baptist is going to reply to his disciples and what we're going to find here is that as, uh, as John replies to his disciples, he is going to basically say that Jesus' ministry supersedes my ministry. Jesus' ministry is more important than my ministry. What Jesus is doing, that must be the priority. Hey, there was no jealousy in John's heart, for he understood the priority of the ministry of Jesus Christ. We find in verse 28, there's the priority of Christ's person. Look at verse 28. The Bible, John says this to his disciples there, Ye yourselves bear me witness that I said, I am not the Christ, but that I am sent before him. So notice he's saying, you know what? I've told you over and over again, I'm not the Christ, that I'm sent before him. And you already said in the previous verses that, To whom thou bearest witness, speaking of Jesus, he's baptizing. What did John witness of Jesus? That he was the Lamb of God that would take away the sin of the world. So he understood that Jesus' person, because of who he was, he was more important than who John was. By the way, John was only a friend of the bridegroom. 
This shows us the priority of Christ's position. In verse 29, notice what he says. He that hath the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom which standeth and heareth him rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This my joy therefore is fulfilled. You know what he's saying? This thing ain't about me. I'm not the bridegroom. Jesus is the bridegroom. I'm just a friend of the bridegroom. I'm just preparing his way. I'm just pointing people to him. Hey, it's not about me. It's not about my pointing. It's not about my baptism. No, it's about Jesus Christ and the priority of his position for he is the bridegroom and he's the one calling out his bride. We've seen in verse number 30 the priority of Christ's popularity. He says he must increase, but I must decrease. See, it's all about Jesus Christ. Jesus should be the priority of every ministry. And you know what? When, when others are exalted and we are abased, you know, we should have no problem with that because it's all about Jesus anyway. Absolutely. Number three, let me show you this. Why did John not have a problem with uh, Jesus increasing? Well, because of Jesus' authority. Number two, because of Jesus' priority. And number three, because of Jesus' superiority. Look at verse 31. Notice in verse 31 that he speaks of the superiority of Jesus' preaching. Look in verse 31 down through verse 34. It says, He that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly and speaketh of the earth. Now you know who's of the earth? John the Baptist was of the earth. And you know all John could do? All John could do is speak of earthly things. He could only speak of that which he was told in the earth. John had no uh, knowledge from going to heaven and hearing uh, God and stalking with God and being with God. No, he's of the earth and he's earthly. And he says, speaking of the earth, he that cometh from heaven is above all. And look at verse 32. And what he hath seen and heard, that he testifies. He's talking about Jesus testifying of what he's seen and heard in heaven. John says this, I'm of the earth and all I can do is talk about earthly things that I learned in the earth. Hey, but Jesus cometh down from above. He's above all and now he's testifying of that which is in heaven and the Bible says that no man receiveth his testimony they're rejecting him but look at verse 33 it says he that received his testimony hath set to his seal that God is true for he whom God hath sent speaketh the words of God for God giveth not the spirit by measure unto him notice what is Jesus doing he's speaking the very words of God hey do you realize when Jesus preached that was God preaching Every word that came out of Jesus' mouth was God's word. When Jesus spoke, he could speak with full authority because he was speaking as God. I know the Pope thinks he can, but listen, the Pope cannot. The Pope cannot speak ex cathedra and, have the, uh, and speak as God from his throne. No, but Jesus Christ could. And so we find here that when Jesus preached, I, boy, I, I just think about this. Could you imagine hearing the Sermon on the Mount? I know oftentimes when we read through there in Matthew chapter 5 and on and so forth, you know, we think about someone standing and just reading. But can you imagine the Lord Jesus preaching that? That's what he did. He didn't get up there and read a manuscript. He preached unto the people. Matter of fact, you'll find that Jesus was a preacher. He came preaching the kingdom of God. Hey, Jesus was not just a teacher. Jesus was the master preacher. And man, I could just imagine hearing him and the words that he would say and how he would say them. Hey, I don't know about you, but sometimes when I'm reading, I'll read out loud and I'll try to picture how would Jesus exactly said this. But you know what? The fact is this. It didn't matter how he said it, whether it was a whisper or whether it was a thunder. He spoke with uh, uh, so, his, his message was so filled with the word of God and so filled by the spirit of God that no one could resist his wisdom. Say the priority of his preaching, the superiority of his preaching. Number two, the superiority of his power. Notice what uh, John says about Jesus at the end of verse 34. It says, for God giveth not the spirit by measure unto him. You know, we talk about being filled with the Spirit, but here's the truth about the filling of the Spirit. We can only get so full of the Spirit as we empty ourselves. You think about that. Now, I know when you get saved, you have all the Spirit because the Holy Spirit comes inside of you, but we're talking about the filling of the Spirit of God, not the baptism of the Spirit of God. Hopefully you understand the difference. But do you realize the fullness of the Spirit of God depends upon the emptiness of self? 
See, if I tried to fill up this bottle with tea, guess what? I wouldn't be able to fill it up with tea. You know why? It still has water in it. It would be hard to do. What would I have to do in order to fill up this bottle with tea? I would have to pour it out and pour tea in it. The fact is this, if I'm going to be filled, the way, fully filled, then I have to be completely emptied of self. And let me say this, I don't know any man, woman, boy, or girl who's ever been completely empty of self. I've known some great men, but I promise you they were not completely empty of self. But can I tell you about Jesus? Read over in Philippians chapter 2. He humbled himself. Came obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Read about his humility. Read about his condescension. And what can I tell you? Hey, Jesus fully could empty himself out that he might be filled without measure. So we have the Spirit of God working through his person. Listen, John the Baptist had great power and great conviction when he preached. Matter of fact, he lost his head over that. But boy, when Jesus preached, he preached with the fullness of God upon him notice what it says in verse 35 it says the father loveth the son and hath given what into his hand all things do you see the priority or the or rather the superiority of his power God's given him all the spirit God's given him all things into his hand that is Jesus number three notice the superiority not just of his preaching his power but also of his purpose Look at verse 36. The Bible says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Notice, John's purpose was what? To baptize and to point to Jesus, right? That was all. John's just a voice crying in the wilderness, right? And when he saw Jesus, he said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. The next day he was standing there with his disciples, and he said the same thing. And two of his disciples left John, and they followed Jesus. See, John was just a voice. John's purpose was just to point people to Christ and make the way plain. That was John's purpose. But do you know the purpose of Jesus' ministry? It far exceeds John's ministry, does it not? Look in verse 36. Here's Jesus' ministry. He has the, his ministry has the ability to give everlasting life. John's ministry could not give everlasting life. God's the only one that could do that. But we find in verse 36 that Jesus' ministry literally has the ability to give everlasting life. See, Jesus came and he died on the cross. He was buried and he rose again. That's his ministry. That is the culmination of the ministry of Jesus Christ. That is the superiority of his purpose. He came that he might give his life a ransom that we might believe on him and have everlasting life. But it also says at the end, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. See, Jesus' ministry is about this. He's the only way to God. And if you're going to get to God, you got to go through Jesus. Jesus is the door. He is not a door. He is the door. There's only one door to get to Jesus Christ. There's not many ways to get to God. There's only one way to get to God, and that is through the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Do you see the superiority of his purpose? So why could John, without any jealousy in his heart, say he must increase but I must decrease? Well, number one, because of the authority of Jesus. Hey, this is God manifest in the flesh. He can do whatever he wants to. Number two, he could say uh, he must increase but I must decrease. Number two, because of the priority of Jesus. Because everything's about the Lord anyway. Matter of fact, Jesus said of himself, speaking of the scriptures, says that they testify of him. The Old Testament books, they testify of Jesus. And John's ministry was about Jesus. So, you know what? Should not Jesus get the priority? Absolutely. Number three, he could say he must increase, but I must decrease because of the spirit superiority of Jesus. Let me put it this way. There's none like him. Go to the book of Hebrews. He's better than the angels. He's better than Moses. Hey, he's better than the best. He's the greatest of the great. See, John looked at Jesus not as others would. 
The Bible says that he hath no form nor comeliness, and when we we'll see him, we'll not desire him, right? There's no beauty in him, right? When the others saw him, they, when well, the world looks at Jesus, they just see a man and a carpenter. But when John the Baptist looked at Jesus, you know what he saw? He saw his complete purpose for living and soon his purpose for dying. Jesus. It's all about him. Let's stand together. Lord, we love you tonight. I thank you for how well the people listened. And Lord, I'm thankful for that little portion of Scripture. There's so much more that can be said about it. But Lord, I'm thankful for what we read tonight. And Lord, I pray tonight that as we get ready to dismiss, I pray you would uh, give us traveling mercies as we go home. Lord, I do pray again, Lord, over our missionaries, the Lynn family. Lord, I pray again over our yellow cards. And God, I pray for all those tonight that are sick and, Lord, going through difficulties. God, I pray for our Sheep of the Week, the Allen family, and also Faith Baptist Church there in Sylacauga, uh, Alabama. Lord, I pray for them tonight. And God, I pray that your hand would be upon their lives and, God, you would bless them. Lord, we sure love you tonight. And God, I pray that this week as we live our lives, Lord, we would refocus and we would remember that our life is not about us and what we want. But, Lord, everything that we are, Lord, it's all about you. God, help us to focus on that, that through our lives you might get maximum glory. God, be with us tonight as we dismiss. I pray you give traveling mercies. God, I pray you bring us back that next point of time, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. You're dismissed tonight. Thank you for listening to this message today. It is our prayer that this sermon fed your soul, lifted your spirit, and encouraged you in your walk with God. And as we conclude, please remember, there's always a place for you at Bible Baptist Church.